Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Inner Empress and you're here at Inner Empress Readings. So I want to take a quick moment to just say thank you so much to everyone who has been so supportive of my channel, of my gift, who has sent love and light to me, especially on my birthday, which was back in January. So I'm sorry that I'm just getting to it now. I've been kind of healing um, from off and on being sick. But thank you so much for the love. Please know that I saw it, that I received it. I also really appreciated the suggestions that were given to me in regards to alternatives to use um, over Sage. So that post is actually in the community tab. If you are subscribed to me, you'll be able to go look at it. There were some wonderful suggestions about using singing bowls for clearing energy, using um, the water of Sage, like boiling Sage and using that many beautiful suggestions so thank you so much for that now in regards to this particular video this is a little different this isn't a pick a pile um or a pick a card instead this is more like a conversation so i know that i've been asked throughout the last few months how to read tarot so I decided to make this video and I really appreciate those of you who have requested this video. It's finally here and I've never done something like this before, but I hope that whatever tips, whatever um, information I can provide can be useful for you and your own journey. So before I jump into the actual uh, talking of the tarot, <laughs> talking of the tarot, <laughs> before I get into that, um, I want to say that I do want to offer more giveaways on my channel. I've never done that before, but I really do want to find a way to kind of give back to the community. So another thing that was suggested to me and what I will do is I will be cutting this video into two parts. The first part will be talking about tarot and the second part will be talking about cardomancy, which is actually divination through playing cards. So some people have also asked me about like the channeled messages that I write and also when I use um, the little pieces of paper that I create myself. So I want to show you how to do that for yourself, those of you who feel comfortable, and for anyone who possibly wants to purchase a deck that I've written channeled messages on, you can find that in my Etsy shop. So the link for that will be in the description box below. I'll also be gifting a lucky subscriber a channeled message box as well. So what I'm going to do as my first giveaway on the channel is if you are subscribed to me and you can go to the community tab, you'll be able to see the post that I put up with the instruction of how to enter the giveaway. So from there, one lucky follower will be able to win a pack of cards that have channeled messages from me to you to use. So without further ado, I'm going to set this to the side and we're going to jump into how to read tarot. Now, the first thing that I want to point out is that there are, as far as I know, two different tarot readers. So there are tarot readers that are very by the book. Um, they go strictly off of the definition that's written in the pamphlet that comes with the tarot. And for instance, let's say they would pull this card, the Fool. They would go by the definition in the book that this is about a risk taker. This is about someone who is naive, who, you know, doesn't pay attention to certain things, childish, possibly about to make a mistake. Whatever the book says, that's pretty much what they go off of. Now, the second type of reader, and I'm not saying that the first one is wrong. Um, the first one is definitely picking up on energy that the universe has provided for them. But the type of reader that I am, I'm an intuitive reader. So what that means is that I pick up on a lot of different things that might not be specifically in the card, or it could be in the card, but just coming to me in a different way versus how I've interpreted that card before. So for instance, with this same card, The Fool, I might look at this as someone who is about to travel, someone who is about to get some type of invitation for a friend, someone who is, you know, doing something with fashion because the clothes are standing out to me. Intuitive readers tend to pick up information from their intuition, from their spiritual gifts. So some of my gifts that I use when I'm reading is that I channel messages from the universe, from uh, different energy sources. I also have all of the clair abilities, so you might want to look that up. So sometimes I hear things, sometimes I see things, I feel things, I have thoughts pop into my mind. So I use those different abilities as I'm reading. So sometimes certain things will stand out to me that perhaps someone else just looking at the card may not see. Now with that in mind, I want to say that it's very important that when you're choosing a tarot deck, that you choose one that you really connect to. The reason being is because if you're going off of your intuition and you're connecting with the cards, sometimes there are certain decks that I cannot read. The images do not talk to me. They do not speak to me. This was actually my first tarot deck ever. This is, I believe I'm pronouncing this right, Rider Wait. I'm going to write the name down just in case you want to look it up, but 
this is the traditional tarot deck. This is the one that most people usually start with. I remember I purchased this in Barnes and Nobles <laughs> in the new age section. And um, I was very young when I first got it. Now I had a hard time because when I first purchased this, I could not read the cards. They did not speak to me. And it's interesting how years later, I'm able to have a much better relationship with this particular deck. But the one that grabbed me the most that I wanna to talk to you about, I realized that I was drawn to like cartoon type of decks personally. So I ended up gravitating towards the Deviant Moon Tarot, which you can see right here. So that was much easier for me to read. And from there, as I started to trust my intuition more, as I started to kind of develop my own style, because this is all about your relationship with the divine. You know, this is about your personal relationship. So how I'm teaching you right now, this is my experience. But for those of you who are watching, you may develop a completely different technique, a completely different relationship with your cards and with your guides. And that's okay. That's perfectly okay. So coming back to this particular tarot deck, um, I really don't know how long this video is about to be. We're just going to find out because I'm going to break it down for you as much as possible and just give you whatever guidance comes to me to give to you. So pretty much, I think it's important starting off that you pick a deck that you're comfortable with, a deck that you resonate with. So it does not have to be this one. This is the traditional one that most people grab. But if there's something else there that speaks to you, go for that. Now, I will say that starting off, everyone should kind of know the the primary messages and meanings of the cards so if you need to study the little pamphlet book that comes with it if you need to look for tarot communities or you know watch other tarot readers that might help you but it is important to kind of know the background meaning so you kind of have an understanding of what you're picking up on now i do want to add that as I continued my journey with tarot and I started to get more decks, um, I started to realize that certain cards and certain decks spoke to me in certain ways. So one particular card would speak to me about a specific type of message, but if I pulled that same card in a different deck, I didn't really get that same vibe. That helps me when I'm reading for different clients because I'll lay my different decks out and I'll literally ask them, which one should I use for this particular client? And You'll notice, depending on the decks and also your intuition, that certain decks will speak better for certain people and situations. For instance, um, for someone I was doing a reading for, something about a particular, I think I was using the Steampunk Tarot, um, something about that deck called to me. And it has a lot of modern things in there. So there's cars, there's um, bicycles, there's like different things like that. So something about the bicycle stood out to me and I remember mentioning it to the client and also mentioning different things that stood out about the image. That's another thing with intuition and reading that I'll go deeper into is that if I can't stop staring at a certain part of the card, if my, my focus is really drawn to it, I know that the universe is highlighting that for me. So I was pointing out that I couldn't stop staring at the waist area of this particular card as well as the bike. And the client ended up reaching out to me and saying that she had lost a substantial amount of weight, um, that recently she has gotten into bicycling as her primary form of exercising. And so there were a lot of other things that stood out, but the thing is that I needed to choose that deck in order to really channel that message through. Otherwise, there's nothing necessarily like that in this particular one. So go with your gut, go with your intuition. The biggest thing with intuition is you have to learn to trust. If you second guess yourself, messages will most likely come to you, but you won't feel confident enough to even put them out there. You know, the messages you have to keep in mind are not for you. You may not know why something came to you. You may not know why you feel a certain something while you're reading, why you, you taste a certain something, smell something, a word popped into your head. It, it's not for you. When I put those messages out there into the world, it becomes clear from the client or whoever I'm reading for why that jumped into my head. That message was for them. That message was an indicator from the universe specifically to them that connected to either a memory or something they're experiencing. And so as a tarot reader, understand that 
we are not like the all-seeing eye. We don't know everything. We know what the universe tells us, what the guides, what the angels tell us, what the energy is telling us. And sometimes we're not meant to know the background story of things. Sometimes we are just the messenger and we're only supposed to relay something so it clicks for the person we're reading for. So that's another misconception that a lot of people have is that as a tarot reader, you know, you're going to know everything about their life. And that's not true. We only know what the universe wants us to know. And there will be times when you're reading your cards that let's say you're reading for yourself, which most tarot readers, myself included, um, we find difficult. And it's because it's hard to keep an unbiased um, like state of mind when you're reading about something that you care about, something you're passionate about, something that you're frustrated about. So I do enjoy watching other tarot readers. I do enjoy, um, you know, having my cards read by other people and things like that as well, because it's very hard for me to look into my own life. If it's something that I'm pretty neutral about or pretty calm about, then it's easier for me to receive the messages. But if I'm supercharged on something, I can't tell whether I am influencing the cards or if I'm picking up what I need to pick up on. So that's something you may find yourself run into. So you might want to just keep that in mind. All right, so now going back into the process, let's talk about the cards. So in a traditional tarot deck, um, there are 78 cards. 22 of those cards are considered the major arcana. Major arcana, I believe, breaks down to like big uh, secrets, major secrets. And so the minor arcana, which are the rest of the cards, those are the little secrets. Now, the minor arcana are broken down into four different suits. We have pentacles, which deals with um, earthly aspects which deal with the material aspects so money uh, tangible things that we can touch investments things like that then we have the wands which deal with the element of fire and so this represents our inspiration our passion our motivation the energy that drives us sometimes even sexual energy is considered in this particular pile I do want to caution you though to never pigeonhole um, something to a specific card or a specific uh, suit. And what I mean by that is like moving over into this, the cups, this is seen as emotions. Most people read the cups as water emotions. And so this deals a lot with um, how the person is feeling on the inside. However, sometimes people see it as the only cards in this deck uh, that can signify emotion are the cups. And that's not true. People may show emotions in different types of ways. And so that's something you want to keep in mind. Just because you're doing a reading about feelings and you don't see any cups doesn't mean the person doesn't feel anything at all. It's just it's being directed in a very different way. So last we have swords and this deals with the intellect the mind communication i also want to point out that with the cups dealing with emotions sometimes this is also seen as um the intuition as well so the inner workings the intuition that's coming through so with that in mind we have the four different suits and they break down like stories we're gonna go through each story but before i go there i want to jump back to the major arcana so with the major arcana this also starts off like a story. We start with zero, which is the fool. Now the traditional meaning of the fool, and like I said, I do think it's important to know the traditional meaning before you start allowing your intuition to just kind of jump in. But this usually is about someone who is trying something for the first time, someone who is about to take a leap of faith, someone who perhaps doesn't look before they leap. You know, they might be someone who is very impulsive, someone who is very naive, sometimes immature, but also someone who's about to embark on a new chapter in life. So those are the general meanings for the fool. Now, I do want to pause real quick and just encourage you that no matter what I tell you in regards to this video, I always encourage you to do your own research as well. So definitely soak up, you know, whatever feels right to you from what I'm saying, but also don't be afraid to go look up, you know, the meanings of the fool. Don't be afraid to start a journal where you write down, like some people like to do a card of a day as they're getting to learn a deck. And so you turn over a card and you just write down the meaning, you write down what came to you when you saw it, um, you know you write down your first impression of it and then you come back at the end of the day and write down how you felt as though this card predicted the energy of your day or you know what it meant to you so that's how you can kind of get to know the cards on a more personal level but I just want you to be open to learning you know don't ever take anything that I or anyone else says as just straight up gospel so that's that
Next we have, it starts with one, we have the magician. Now the magician has a saying, as above, so below. This is the great manifester. It's also the great communicator. Now, in addition to that, certain cards in the major arcana correspond to the horoscopes. So I don't remember them all, but I believe that the magician deals with um, Aries or perhaps I, I believe Mercury rules over the magician. So communication is big. For those of you who love the Zodiac, who love horoscope astrology, that might be something you want to incorporate more into your readings that might help you. Now, the magician has all four suits of the tarot on the table so it's kind of showing that you have everything that you need to make things happen this person you know can be taken as someone who thinks of something and then manifests it into the material world someone who is great at giving advice at speaking of of speaking things into existence another thing that i want to point out with these cards is that sometimes they do carry a negative energy now, if you read reversals, you may actually literally turn your cards when you shuffle and what comes out, you may read that as a reversed energy or sometimes a blocked energy. But for instance, let's say um, with the magician, a reversed energy could be the fact that, yes, this person is a great communicator, but they're using their talents to be a con man. They're using their talents to trick people, to scam people. They're deceiving you about something. They're trying to get you to do something. This is somebody who could also be very lazy. So it really depends on what is coming to you. That's why I like to use my intuition because sometimes certain cards, you know, you'll pick up on what exactly is trying to tell you whether you keep the card up or down. I personally don't use reversals when I read. Um, That's because I like to use clarification cards and we'll go into that a little bit as well later on. But pretty much, I like to use my intuition to tell me, hey, is this card um, coming through in a positive aspect or is it telling me something, you know, a little different? Now, moving forward on this journey, the Fool pretty much goes through the story of they embark on this new journey and they come across the Magician. The Magician lets them know that you have everything that you need in your little knapsack. You know, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you'll be able to do so, but you have to be willing to go on this journey. So the Fool goes on this journey and comes across the High Priestess. This is card number two. Now, I do want to point out that for those of you who are big in regards to numerology, you know, the numbers that come through in regards to the cards might be big for you as well. You might want to learn about that now in regards to two we have the high priestess here she deals a lot with the in between she deals a lot with the intuition you see the water here like i said intuition you see the moon here so the moon is also another symbol of things that are underneath the surface things that have yet to be seen deals also with the feminine the divine feminine Imagery is very important when it comes to reading tarot also because certain cards will have certain images and like I said, you'll be pulled to certain decks for different situations and clients. So here the high priestess has pomegranates behind her and pomegranates, I believe they have a symbolism like of being a fruit of wisdom. They also were used in the story of Persephone and Hades in the underworld. So you might want to learn a little bit more about that. So whatever is in your particular deck, you want to be knowledgeable about um, in regards to this, I don't remember the exact words. You might want to look up what it exactly means, the B and the J. I know that it has a specific um, meaning, but she deals a lot with neutrality. She deals a lot with secrets. She deals a lot with the divine feminine and things that are not yet revealed to you. So it's not that she's hiding things from you, it's that she expects for you to figure it out in a sense. Now, her counterpart, we'll go into that in a moment, but... Moving forward, we have number three, the Empress. So this is considered usually like goddess energy, mother energy, unconditional love, creativity, you know, fertility. Usually she's depicted as pregnant in different tarot decks. And so this can also be a card of waiting. So you might have to wait nine months or some period of time frame for something to come into fruition. Like it's already in motion. It's already been conceived in a sense, but you have to wait for it to come into life. So this sometimes also represents um, divine feminine energy, like a a very powerful, beautiful, attractive woman, but there's so many different meanings to the card. So I really do encourage you to kind of study them. Now, the counterpart to the Empress is the Emperor. So 
this is ruled by Aries. And now what's coming through with this card is that, first of all, he's holding a golden apple. So like I said, you want to look up um, apples, which are usually considered a fruit of wisdom. He has an ankh in his hand. So the imagery really stands out. Uh, this card usually talks about being very logical about structure, about planning things, about making things happen. So pretty much whatever the divine feminine thinks of, the divine masculine makes happen. So as above in the thought, in the manifesting of the universe, as below on earth in the 3D. Now, sometimes this energy can come across as someone who can be a bit aggressive, a bit egotistical, but it really depends on what you're reading, um, you know, why you're reading. Like, like I said, I'm more of an intuitive reader, so I like to use my intuition because this can also be a great leader. This can be someone who is stepping into their personal power. This can be an older father figure. So it really depends on what you're asking about. Next on the journey, this is the counterpart actually of the High Priestess, and this is the Hierophant. So the Hierophant is kind of like the officiant on Earth. So whereas the High Priestess has all of this divine knowledge, but she expects you to figure it out, like you to be willing to immerse yourself into the mystery, the Hierophant is more open to trying to tell you what the divine wants you to do. So usually this can represent um, a priest, it can represent, you know, a professor, uh, someone usually who is like a mentor. This person wants to teach, wants to be heard. The energy of this also talks about uh, sometimes conforming, sometimes tradition, morality, doing what's considered right. This can also be a card of commitment. So like being in a church and being married. So there are many, like I said, meanings to the different cards. Then we have the lovers. Now, I believe that the Hierophant is considered to be Taurus or Virgo. I'm not exactly sure, but I believe it is an earth sign. Um, as I said, for those of you who are interested in horoscopes and zodiacs, you might want to learn about that. Also, the numbers, as I said. So the Hierophant, for instance, is number five. Five is considered a number of divine chaos. So it's where things start getting shaken up a bit. There's some change that's going on. Six for the lovers, six talks about harmony. So with the lovers, it really is about coming into union, sometimes with an actual lover, sometimes with a soulmate, which does not have to be strictly romantic, but also it's about coming into union with things that our soul has chosen. So the lovers is not always just about love. It's also about choices. This is also the card of Gemini. So communication can be a big point in this as well. So that's why I say it's really important to kind of understand the meanings that are going on. Now, if you look deeper at the imagery, like I said, imagery is very important as well when you're reading for tarot. This man is really focused on the woman, but the woman is not focused on anything happening here on earth. She's looking up to divinity. She's looking up to the angel. So a lot of people read that in a lot of different ways, but it's a matter of, like I said, realizing the stories behind the cards and also certain authors of different tarot decks will kind of tell you what they were inspired by what they meant when they made a card and it's always good to keep that in mind but it's also important to build off of your own intuition and what's coming to you and how the cards are speaking to you so next on this journey we have the chariot and the chariot represents cancer now some people read it a little differently depending on the deck but the chariot is talking about forward movement. Now, this is the thing. Sometimes this is a divided mind. So someone who has to bring, you know, two sides of their mind together, their will and inspiration, as well as their intellect and their passion in order to like succeed and move forward. But this is a very driven victory type of card. Someone who sometimes doesn't care who they have to run over in order to succeed as long as they do. Next, we have strength. Now, strength is depicted differently in many different tarot decks. I mean, all the cards have variations and stuff, but I've seen a lot of different things with strength. Sometimes strength is seen as lust, so like sexual energy. Um, sometimes strength is seen very aggressively, so like really getting a control on the situation. And then sometimes it's depicted like you see here, where strength is seen as the quieter strength, more of compassion and understanding, the strength of kindness. So you might want to get to know a little bit more, like I said, about the different variations of cards. Now, this card tends to stand for Leo, as you can see the lion here. And most cards will have a lion or some type of beast, in a sense, in the strength card. Then we have the hermit. Now, the hermit, I believe, is Virgo. 
if I remember correctly. And so the hermit talks about someone who wants to be alone, someone who is isolated, who took themselves out of some type of situation. It can be for greater understanding as you see that they're being guided by a star. So it can be the fact that they were guided by the universe. They're guided by some inner light. They're looking for some type of answer. But usually this is a person who is keeping to themselves for some reason. Next, we have the Wheel of Fortune. So the Wheel of Fortune usually talks about um, luck when it's well aspected. It's talking about luck. It's talking about um, things changing, unexpected things coming into your life, you know, good fortune. Now, it also, though, can mean what goes up comes down. So this does talk a lot about karma, about, you know, if you're on top of the world, sometimes something can change that puts you at the bottom, but it's for a reason. So we have the god Anubis here. We have a sphinx. We have a griffin. Uh, we have an angel. Like, there's a lot of different symbolism here. Then we have justice. So this is the card that signifies Libra. Now, in regards to justice, it's usually about either legal matters. It can talk about somebody who is a judge, a lawyer, something like that. Sometimes when this comes up for cards where you're reading about something legal, it means that things will go in your favor, depending on the surrounding cards. But usually it is a good sign that pops up. Um, it also talks about divorce at times. It can talk about um, just being fair, needing to hear both sides of a situation, being unbiased. So once again, please make sure you look at the different meanings of the card. Then we have the hanged man. So the hanged man talks about somebody who pretty much puts themselves in a situation of self-sacrifice. They literally hung themselves upside down so that they can see things from a new perspective, which is why the mind is illuminated right here. This person, even though they're hanging upside down, looks pretty comfortable for the most part. And this is about someone who is either allowing themselves to surrender, so it's like they're finally surrendering to a situation or to the divine, or it's about someone who is kind of stepping back to see things in a whole new way. Then we have the death card. I know a lot of people can be scared by this card and like the devil. And one thing that I learned when I first started reading is that with tarot, it's really picking up on energy. So if you are putting out this intense energy that you're scared of a specific card, best believe that card is going to keep popping up. You are literally drawing that card to you. So when I first started, I was a little shaky about the death card and so guess what kept popping up the death card until I sat down and I really started to look at it and understand its meaning so death is actually talking about transformation very seldom will it ever mean a literal death now what it usually means is the end of something but as one door closes another one opens so usually something ends and something new begins so with that saying this card usually talks about the old king being dead and there's like a crown literally on the ground down here. And so this priest here is about to crown a new king. So it's about one phase ending and a new phase beginning. You see the sun rising in the background. And death is also talking about the inevitable, things that you cannot change. So that is what is coming through with this card. Next, we have temperance. Now, temperance is an angel that is usually seen as mixing two completely different things. In some decks, you'll see this angel mixing fire and water, two considered like impossible elements, but it's like working alchemy. They're creating something completely different. Now, what this card tends to mean is um, divine timing. So having to have patience, having to allow things to work itself out, as well as moderation of things having to be taken out of the realm of the extreme and put into finding the right combination, the right ingredients, the right recipe to make something new and something wholesome and balanced happen. So this is a good card to see if there's any arguments that have been popping up any disagreements or anything like that because it says that you know all that hot temper all of those harsh emotions are being moderated they're being kind of healed in a sense to where now you can come together with a more level mind and speak about things so next we have the devil so I want to talk about this card so with the devil if you really look at the imagery you have this um male looking demon and this female looking demon and 
what we have here if you look at the chains around their neck it's very loose it's just hanging a big thing with the devil card is what we allow ourselves to be enslaved by the devil is not making these people be here these people want to be here whether it's because of drinking with all these grapes whether it's because of lust and passion or anger these people are allowing themselves to be enslaved by their baser instincts and that is what the devil card talks about the devil card talks about obsession it talks about anxiety about fear about um you know all of those lower vibrating instincts that we hold on to then we have the tower now some people are afraid of the tower when it pops up because they they know that it's something that's completely out of the blue and so the thing with the tower though and one thing you want to keep in mind when you're reading the cards is don't ever if you can help it don't ever see the cards as good or bad like I said, all cards can have different meanings. So you can pick, for instance, the Ten of Cups, which people always see as like this beautiful, sunny, wonderful card. But sometimes that can be talking to you about too much of a good thing isn't really a good thing. So really listen to your intuition if you can. Really look at the, the cards around it to see what the card is like really trying to tell you about that situation. So with this particular card, a lot of people see it as something bad. But honestly, the Tower is about whatever was false now gets knocked down now there's a clear clean slate in order to build up something stronger something true if there was any uh lies around you anything that you weren't aware of the tower is going to break that down yes it may shock you in the moment sometimes that shock can hurt sometimes you just might be mildly surprised but the tower is about something unexpected from the divine coming through and kind of pulling you know the blindfold off making you aware of something that you did not realize before Next, we have the star. So the star has a few different meanings. First off, the star is a very innocent card. Um, it talks about being very vulnerable. You see this person is naked, uh, very open, very, uh, like I said, innocent. It's a card about healing, you know, spiritual healing. It's also a card about guidance, you know, following the North Star. Now, another thing with the star, though, is that the star can talk about wishes, but wishes that you are working towards so something in the future not something immediate so that's something to keep in mind um sometimes it can be seen as someone being put on a pedestal and you know that can be good and bad in certain situations because sometimes for instance for a crush you might see the star card pop up of how they see you and yes it's a beautiful card but this person might feel like you're out of their league like you're out of this world and depending on how they see themselves in comparison sometimes you can feel frustrated like why do they see me in such a beautiful way but they don't make any move and it's because they are seeing you as something ethereal that they themselves can't compare to now the moon so the moon has to deal with intuition um the moon has to deal with sometimes secrets sometimes things that are done in the dark this card i tend to personally read as scorpio um now there are different decks i believe like death is actually read as a scorpio card for other decks but i tend to personally read for this deck that way some people see it as cancer the main thing is that when this card comes up, usually it's talking about confusion. It's talking about things that are being kept hidden, things that might be secret. It can sometimes talk about magic that's happening. Um, you know, all things that happen kind of in moonlight and under secrecy and things like that. The intuition, the, the emotions under the surface. Now the sun. So we had the star, we had the moon, and we had the sun. Now the sun is considered one of the best cards in the deck. Um, the sun usually, whether it's reversed or right side up, is usually considered a positive card. Now, like I said, be careful with considering things positive and negative because too much of a good thing can be considered, you know, a bad thing. So with the sun, usually what this stands for is, like I said, innocence. Anything with nakedness usually has to do with being vulnerable, being open, not hiding. So here's this child, there's innocence, there's happiness. Um, there is a reveal. Everything is out on the table. There's just a happy, glowing, innocent, vitalized energy. So this also, I believe, stands for Leo. Um, this is a fire sign type of energy that's coming through. But usually this card has to deal with everything is good. You know, things are on the up and up. New things are coming into your life. Happy energy. 
Also, I need to point out because it just stood out to me. Sometimes this card indicates pregnancy. Now, I've definitely come across other cards that have indicated that. And on some decks, you will notice that the Sun card will have twins on it. So sometimes that card stands for twins. Sometimes this card stands for a boy. Uh, when asking yes or no questions, first off, I don't usually advise that you ask yes or no when it comes to tarot, just because sometimes they don't give you straightforward answers. Sometimes it's like a roundabout where they want to take you on this whole philosophical journey. But what I have seen in my experience is that the sun is usually a yes card. You know, there are certain cards in the deck that when they come out, they indicate yes. And the sun is considered the, the top one in regards to that. Now, when I have gotten maybes or please stop asking us that question, I've gotten the moon. So certain cards will pop up either the high priestess, the moon, like certain cards that are kind of like secrecy cards when the cards are telling you, hey, can you stop asking us that question? We're not going to give you the answer or you're not listening to the answer. So we're not about to answer this again. Sometimes your cards can get spicy with you. Just want to put that out there. Then we have judgment. So judgment talks about... Here in the clarion call, I forget which angel this is. Um, it might be Uriel or it might be Gabriel. I'm not exactly sure. But it's about things that were from the past, things that you thought were over or were dead coming back around to be dealt with, to be put to rest. So like judgment day. So usually when this card pops up, someone from your past might be coming back around. Um, It could also be some type of evaluation at jobs or something like that. But it's usually that something is going to pop back up in your life, could even be an issue or a theme that you've been dealing with. And so this is indicating that it needs to be dealt with. Like this is getting a, a new lease on life, a second chance to be either addressed and put to rest, to come back together, to move to a new cycle. But that's what this card tends to stand for. And then last on the journey of the fool, after the fool has been through all of that and learned and dealt with things and, you know, come back around, now we are at the world. And the world is like a doorway. It is the closing of the chapter. With the world, this is completion. Usually this is seen as somebody who, first off, it can be taken as someone who is well-traveled, someone who has literally traveled the world, someone who is graduating, someone who is moving to a different cycle in life, someone who is pregnant also, um, about to give birth or recently has. So this card, this is like, closing out a chapter and stepping through a doorway into the next journey. It's kind of like the journey begins and you become the fool once again. All right. Hope you're sticking with me. Hope you're still here. If you need to kind of, you know, refresh your snacks, go ahead and do that right quick. And we are going to jump into the suits. Starting us off on our journey of the suits, we're going to start with the ace of pentacles. Now, something you want to know in regards to the aces is that the ace is potential. The ace is the beginning of the suit. It is the seed that is being planted. Now, in regards to the ace of pentacles, we literally can kind of consider it a seed. So, with these hands, the suits usually look like um, some type of divine hand coming out of nowhere and offering this opportunity. Now, with this particular one, sometimes this can be seen as a proposal, like literally someone asking for a hand in marriage, offering a ring. It can be money that comes out of nowhere, someone either offering you money or asking for money. Um, usually this is about something that's being given to you. Like the aces are usually like an opportunity that is being provided, but this tends to deal with material opportunities, tends to deal with some type of job, some type of money, some type of housing, like a, a physical opportunity that comes through, even a business proposal or a job offer. Now, the thing to understand with the aces is that they are a very temperamental type of energy. If you don't use that energy, it's not going to stick around forever. So it can be wasted in a sense. Moving down the line of the story, so in the pentacles, this is a story where we start with potential and we figure out, what am I about to do with this? Like, this is a person who, with the two of pentacles, has a lot going on and they're trying to find balance. They're trying to juggle between these different opportunities that they have. Moving into the three of pentacles, this usually talks about working together. So this is talking about trying to come up with a plan with people in order to create this masterpiece. So usually this is teamwork. This can be co-workers. This can be um, a job opportunity. This can be, you know, two people coming together and wanting to start a family, like bring in a new person. So it really depends on how you want to read it. But this card is really coming together to build something. 
Then here with the four of pentacles, usually this is taken as someone now it can be taken two different ways i mean all cards can be taken different ways but depending on if it's well aspected or not this card can be someone who is investing for something they're saving up for something that is important to them or it can be someone who is being miserly so they are holding on so tightly that you know they're kind of being like scrooge if you're familiar with that storyline they don't want to give money to anyone they don't want to spend money it's like really penny pinching and because of that, it hurts them in the end. You see how the story is developing? So this, the Five of Pentacles, it can be taken as someone who has lost their home, lost their job. They're dealing with sickness. They've been kicked out of a relationship. Now, it also can be considered someone who, despite your hardships, you have someone who's there for you through thick and thin. So some people sometimes see the Five of Pentacles as the marriage card. Like, no matter what you go through, I'm going to be here for you. Now, moving on from that, you get a lucky break. Someone helps out or you help someone out. So you've just been through this hardship. You know, you're going through the snow. You've lost nearly everything or you're falling on hard times. And here someone is helping you out, offering something. So it can be some type of advice. It can be some type of help, some type of money. But the sixes are about balance. So this particular balance is someone needs and someone has and they need to give. So if someone needs to receive, someone needs to give. And it talks about that kind of power play that goes on right there. Now, sometimes that can be ill aspected where someone is feeling all high and mighty. Someone can be wanting you to give more than you know they're actually willing to give in return. But like I said, you have to fill out the rest of the cards and situation you're reading for. Now, moving forward in the story, we have the Seven of Pentacles. So let's say this person has just received, you know, their luck has turned around. They received some type of help, some type of guidance, and they went ahead and they did something with it. Now they're sitting back and they're waiting. They're doing some research. They're trying to see what will their investment, what will their hard work yield. We move now into the Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight is talking about this person is making things happen. This person is dedicated to learning, to studying, you know, in the process of all the research they were doing. Now they're applying. Now they're trying to figure out how can I make this, this work for me? This person, you know, is starting a business. This person might possibly be a workaholic. This person could be an apprentice. This person could be a jewelry maker. This person can deal with tattoos. These cards can mean so many different things based off of, like I said, your intuition and the imagery now this person has put in so much work since the beginning when they were offered this opportunity with the ace and they have learned they have been given a chance they have lost and they have invested in themselves to where now they are at the nine of pentacles where they have achieved self-independence and mastery they can look at everything around them and feel truly confident in their life and what they have built for themselves now the only thing that's missing closing out the suit is the Ten of Pentacles, someone to share it with. This person is confident, but it's a lonely confidence. It doesn't mean that they're lonely feeling, but it's very singular. So now we move into the Ten of Pentacles where this person looks back on their life. They look at their grandchildren. They look at their, you know, family that they have around them. They look at everything, their businesses they've established, family, wealth, their legacy. And that is what the Ten of Pentacles stands for. Now we move into the page of pentacles and each of the suits has a royal family attached to it. So you will have the page, which is a very youthful energy. It's the apprentice, the person just starting out. You have the knight who is a little bit further along than that. This person, uh, usually knights deal with movement. So this is the slowest moving knight in the whole entire tarot, but knights usually deal with a message coming to you. Then we have the queen, which is self-mastery, but in a different way from the king. And the king, he's also self-mastery of the suit. So these two are like the epitome of mastering the element and the lesson of, you know, the particular suit that they are attached to. So coming back here, we have the page of pentacles. Page of Pentacles just came across this opportunity, doesn't know what to do about it, but they're excited. This person wants to study, they want to learn, you know, they want to invest wisely, and they're really excited about the potential. They want to see what can I make out of this. Very young energy, very naive energy. Sometimes these particular cards are used as indicator for people. So if this came up, this can be a person who is a little bit more immature. However, this particular suit, even being a younger person or 
you know, a novice at something, they still take things quite seriously. This is the person who's going to study, study, study and come knock out that exam or blow you away in the water with their knowledge. So this person gets a spark. They get a taste of this ace. You know, it has been offered to them and they take it. And now moving forward with the knight, the knight, like I said, is all about movement and messages. However, this particular knight is the slowest one in the tarot deck. That can be good and that can be considered bad in a sense. So in regards to relationships, sometimes it's good because this person, they're really taking their time to consider the future. They really want to think of the potential of what they're investing into. Like they're very serious, very, um, you know, thoughtful type of person. However, the flip side, sometimes this person thinks too much and does too little. Sometimes this person moves so slow that you're like, will they ever make a move? Will you ever make a decision? So like I said, each card can have an up and a down to it. The queen of pentacles, she is a master of this suit. She is considered the homemaker. She is a business owner. She is, you know, the the super mom, you know, the, the one who keeps the whole family together. She gives great advice. She knows how to uh, invest and, and just all of those fruitful type of things. She's such a, a nurturing energy. And that's what comes through. A lot of the queens are an outward type of energy. And a lot of the kings tend to be a bit more inward. So she deals a lot with other people. She wants to make you feel comfortable. She wants to make you feel at home. She wants to figure out how she can give you advice that's going to help you, that's going to maximize on your benefits. You know, she's a very outward, let's do type of energy. Versus the king. The king is also a master of his suit. Him and the queen are equal when it comes to the tarot. One is not more powerful or better than the other. They just express their energy differently. So the king is more inward. The king is usually advisor here with the king of pentacles. This is someone who has built businesses, who has built up their legacy from the ground up, who will give you advice, who may also... Um, you know, give you some type of money to help you finance things. You know, there's an energy of this person is more of a mentor. You come to them when you need help versus the queen, in a sense, wants to come to you and help. Doesn't mean though, now that doesn't mean that that's always the case. Please take things as it feels in the situation as you're reading, but that's just what's coming through. I also, like I said, encourage you to do more research on each card because you might come across something that goes more in depth or sparks you in a way that I haven't mentioned. So that's the story of the pentacles. All about what one has acquired, what one has built for themselves, about the material. It also deals with the body. So sometimes with pentacles coming up, it talks about the physical body, the physical health, you know, things like that, that which you can almost pretty much touch in a sense. Now, moving forward into the wands, we start with the ace, the ace of wands. The universe has provided this new opportunity with the ace of wands. Sometimes this is a spark of life. Sometimes this is considered the phallic symbol. So can be a symbol for penises, can be a symbol for masturbation, can be a symbol for motivation, a spark of creativity and, you know, something that you want to begin doing. Like usually you'll see this in different tarot decks with like a, a baby, um, something like that. And it's really about just growth, new growth, new inspiration, new creative ideas that are being brought to life. So you take that, which the universe has offered, and we move into the two. So in the two, we have this person here is holding the globe and they've already gone so far in life. So they're trying to figure out where do I go from here? What decision do I make? With this card, this usually talks about kind of being at a crossroads. So you have to make a choice. You have to make some type of decision. And it's about which choice is best for you. Moving from that energy, person makes a choice. They end up in this new land. And now they're looking off at the horizon. The Three of Wands talks about waiting. It's a card of patiently waiting because you've made a choice. You've put out energy into the universe. And now you're trying to see what's going to come back from that. We move forward from that particular moment to the four of wands the four of wands you've been working hard this is a time of celebration a time of freedom a time to relax and rejoice and come together with other people to build a new home in this new place that you've traveled to but there's some trouble in paradise 
we move into the five of wands and in the five of wands there's some jealousy there's some competition sometimes this is seen as just like a plane of gains and stuff you know can be um not a, like a serious plane of gains but just having fun a, a little cute competition here and there but sometimes this is like i said it's, it's jealousy somebody wants what you want or you have to like fight to prove yourself or position something of that nature after the battle there's a victor which is the six of wands so the six of wands this person has won they are being you know carried throughout the crowd people are acknowledging them people are seeing them and then we move forward to the seven of wands you fought, you won, now you have to defend your position. Now people may want what you want. Now people may criticize what you want now that you're on this bigger platform, now that more people see you. So it's about standing your ground in the seven of wands. Eight of wands, message comes your way. So this is all about quick communication, quick action. Usually this is a card where, and I think it might be the only card out of the suits, I'm not exactly sure, but I know in this particular deck where there is no other person, you don't see who threw this, but it's quick communication coming your way. Sometimes they call this the arrows of love, where if someone you're asking if they like you, usually it's a lot of emotion, a lot of feeling, a lot of you know sexual energy that's coming through, but a message is coming your way. After everything that you've been through, now we're at the nine of wands. And this is where you have been through so much that you're tired. You're tired, you're wary, you're cautious, but you haven't given up yet. You're still holding on. We get to the Ten of Wands, which is the end of the wand suit. And after everything has been said and done, you pick up your wands. You've learned a lot. It's kind of a burden. It's a lot to carry, but you move forward from there. And that's what the Ten of Wands is about. Any of the tens that you hit, like I said, the numbers are important as well. So anytime you hit a 10, that is a closing out of a cycle and the start of something new. So this is a closing out of a very tough cycle of, you know, carrying this burden. You are choosing to pick up these wands and to relocate. You are choosing this burden. And so you are going to take all your experiences and you're going to move forward. You know, if you're asking about how someone felt about you or about a situation and you pull this card, it's heavy. They're feeling a lot. They might have so much on their plate they can't focus on how they feel about you. Or it might be the fact that you're so heavily on their mind that it's just weighing them down. There's a lot that comes through with these cards. So like I said, you have to look at what else is popping up with the particular card. But we move on from there into the royal family. So we had the page. So the page received the wand from the ace, that mysterious hand that came out of nowhere. And this page is adventurous. You see the pyramids in the background. You see the clothes. This is stylish, okay? This person loves to be seen. They love flashy energy. This is fire energy. And so this page wants to see, what can I do with this stick? Like, what can I make happen? Can I play with the stick? Can I beat somebody with the stick? Can I use it on a magical adventure? Like, what are the possibilities? Then we have the Knight of Wands. This is the fastest moving knight in the deck. However, this knight also slows down quickly. So usually they consider the Knight of Wands as the hot and cold person. Like just as quickly as they're interested, they burn out. And so this person always wants adventure, is usually very sexually active or at least, you know, attracted to people, very fast moving, you know, all of that type of energy, hot, hot, hot energy. Then we get to the Queen of Wands and she is very charismatic. She's very mysterious, very attractive and alluring. And I'm not talking about in a specific like features type of way, but just there's something about her. No matter what she looks like, there's something about her that people want to listen to her. People want to be around her. People want to be involved with whatever it is she wants people to be involved with. She makes things happen. And so, like I said, a lot of the queens are outward energy because then we get to the king and once again, they are equal. The king, I would say this is the only other one who is very much outward like the queen. This king is also very charismatic. Now, the difference between the king and the knight is that the king has learned and has mastered. So yes, this is a very attractive male. Um, doesn't have to be just a man. You know, this is male energy. This is yang energy, yin energy, but... This can be man or woman. A, a woman can be signified by a king just like a man can be signified by a queen. So I just want to put that out there. Sometimes that can confuse people. It's talking about the energy and how it's being manifested, not necessarily the gender and sex of the person. So 
the male energy that comes through from here, very outgoing, just like the queen, loves to talk, loves to tell a good story, loves to go to social events, loves to rally people behind something, great when it comes to crowds, great when it comes to like, you know, innovation and getting people motivated and traveling and all of that. The difference with this person though from the knight is that they have learned to settle down. All of the kings have learned from their night stages how to be more disciplined, how to be more when it comes to what they are. Now, if the king was ill-aspected, let's say you read in reverse, this might be a player still. This might be someone who is just so much better at, you know, tricking people or luring people in or whatever the case is, you know, that type of energy. But once again, I encourage you to do more research on each of these cards. All right, so moving on, we have the Ace of Cups. Now with the Ace of Cups, usually this is seen as a flourishing of emotion. So this particular card, the person might be experiencing a crush. The person might be experiencing a surge of anger. It's like this just flush of emotion that they can't necessarily control. Usually in most cases, it's an indicator of positive emotions, but like I said, you got to read it for how it's coming through with the other cards and your intuition. But the universe offers, you know, this cup, it's overflowing. And with this dove here, there's a symbol of peace. Peaceful, beautiful emotions are happening. We move from one to two. Two is usually about coming together with something. So we have the two of cups. And now you're experiencing these emotions. And now you want to offer these emotions to someone else. You are connecting. You, you realize someone who you feel that instant spark with, who you feel like they get me, they understand, like, I like you, that type of energy. So from the two, we move to three. Three is sometimes seen here as friendship energy. Um, it can be taken that way. I mean, you can have friendship here as well, where you find a friend that you instantly connect with. It's not all romantic. But usually this is a card of celebrating, of having fun, of going out, of like, you know, realizing that your friends click with your family, that your partner clicks with your friend group. You know, it's just a celebration, an outward celebration and feeling like I can have a great time with this person. They click with my tribe. From that energy, we move into the four. And so from the four, this individual is considered to be discontent and bored. And it's where they have these three cups in front of them. And they're looking at it with this expression like they're tired of whatever it is they've been experiencing. But they're also not paying attention to the fact that the universe is offering them something new. They don't even notice that this opportunity is here. So this is usually seen as someone who is apathetic about their situation and whatever it is they're experiencing. From the four, this person missed this opportunity. Now we move into the five and they're regretful. Now this person is looking at the cups that have spilt over. But the problem with this is that they're so stuck in the past of what they didn't have, what they didn't do, what, you know, slipped by, that they're not realizing there's still an opportunity behind them. There's still a chance that they just turned around to salvage the situation or to realize it's not as bad as they thought. Now moving from this energy into the six... This is all about memories, about nostalgia, looking back in the past, but not in a regretful way like the five was, but in a more innocent, happy way. You know, sometimes this is about childhood friends. Sometimes this is a card that's considered about soulmates because, you know, someone that you once were connected to, whether in this life or a past life, coming around. This is happy times. This is happy memories. You know, this is sharing and giving and just having a wonderful, innocent time. From here, we move into the Seven of Cups. And this is a card of illusions, a card of fantasy. Sometimes a person is daydreaming. Sometimes a person has so many different options in front of them, they don't know what's the right one to choose. Now, the interesting thing about this card is some of these options are dangerous. Some of these options are tempting, but it's this card right here where the universe is trying to guide them to where they should be paying attention to if they choose to focus. Now, from all this confusion, we get to the point where this person decides, you know what? None of this is for me. None of it is right for me. I need to go on a soul journey. I need to be like the hermit and I need to just walk away. And so this person follows their intuition. We're in nighttime. We have the moon up here. They follow their intuition. They follow their spiritual guidance and they move forward. Moving forward from that illusion takes them to the nine of cups. 
to where now, once again, that soul low energy in the nine, this person has found contentment. This person is happy with everything that they have achieved. Now, I do want to give you alternatives to this card. Sometimes this card can be seen as someone who perhaps drinks a little too much. Sometimes this can be seen as someone who likes to host parties and events. This can also be as someone who's being a little bit haughty, flaunting what they have. But this is considered the wish card, the wish fulfillment. What you have wished for, you had the courage to go seek, and now it's here for you. So that's the Nine of Cups. Now, from the nine, the universe says, I could do you one better. So you were happy by yourself. Let me throw a partner and some kids on it. So extra happiness on top of happiness, depending on what your definition of happiness is. Maybe you don't want kids. That's okay. But maybe you don't want a partner. That's okay, too. But the main thing is just having it all. It's almost like that fairy tale ending. Now, please keep in mind, like I said, that tens are endings and new beginnings so even though there's this beautiful moment right here it's about appreciating that moment because you never know when the journey is going to start again you never know when the next hardship is going to come the next lesson things like that but for the moment everything is just picturesque pretty much now we move into the suit and so the royal family here page of cups Page of Cups has gotten some type of divine wisdom, some type of intuition, some type of inkling, you know, something has been sparked in their psyche. And so they want to go on a journey to understand this a little bit more. This also can be seen as a crush when somebody realizes they have a crush on someone else. Now we move into the Knight of Cups, the most romantic knight of the tarot. And so the Knight of Cups is in love with the thought of being in love so this is the romeo looking for the juliet this is the person who wants to sweet talk you the person who wants to wine and dine you and give you sweet nothings this particular night can also be considered the high and by lover the person who fell into love and kind of fell out of love now i would not take all these cards at just face value and you know define somebody based off of one card but i'm just giving you like the energy this person really loves the thought of love but really doesn't understand what love truly is and what it takes to make a relationship work so this person will give you sweet nothings they want to buy you gifts they possibly want to write you poetry and things like that but as soon as things start getting tough or as soon as that glitz and glam starts to wear away it's like they're in search for the next thing that they're in love with the holy grail so moving on from the night we have the queen of cups so the queen of cups is considered the most psychic queen in the tarot and so all the queens have their own abilities and stuff but usually she deals with intuition, with dreams, with insight that comes from, you know, the, the divinity, the higher realms. And so also she tends to, quote unquote, be considered one of the more um, emotionally vulnerable queens. So she's more open to expressing how she feels. She's more open to telling you how she feels of, of having long talks and expressing emotions and things like that. I don't want to say she's a more emotional queen, but she's more in touch with her emotions. Now, if she's ill aspected, you know, she could be emotionally manipulative or over the top or things like that could even be emotionally cold. But that's if you're reading it in that way. Now with the king, so as I said, she's more open to expressing that emotion outward. The king is not the knight of cups. The king understands love. The king is more mature, has mastered those emotions. And because he is so mastered, sometimes it's a problem where this king feels very deeply. Like, I don't know if you can see the water down here. His water is very active. However, he's very self-contained. So this king will feel a lot of emotions for a person. If you're asking about like, what does this person feel? They feel a lot of deep emotion, but very rarely will they express that. This king will hold it in. This king will not want to come out and tell you necessarily what they're dealing with, but they understand, they sympathize, you know, they will act in accordance to what they believe is right. But this is not necessarily an over the top speaker. Now, I do want to say that I have intuitively picked up this particular king as a chef before as well. So like I said, please listen to your intuition and you'll start to notice patterns. You'll start to notice the way certain cards and, um, you know, different suits and, and kings and queens and people like that in the cards, how they will translate to you. Like I've seen the queen of cups and also the high priestess, I've seen her as a psychic, like a tarot reader. And I've seen, like I said, the king as... Um, a chef, as well as something with martial arts came up once before. But 
sometimes it changes depending on the person you're reading for, the situation, the deck. Now, before I go to the next suit, remember how I said the Ace of Wands is considered like the phallic symbol? So the Ace of Cups is sometimes seen as the feminine uh, genitalia symbol. So especially if you're asking something about sex, you know, things being moist, wet, you know, you get the drift. But that's what usually comes up um, if you're asking about that type of energy, that type of situation. Okay, so moving on to the Ace of Swords. Hand of Divinity comes out of nowhere and offers this flaming sword of knowledge. Aces deal with communication. They deal with thoughts. Sometimes it's written word, things like that, insight. So you get this spark of inspiration, light bulb moment. You know, this deals with truth, cutting away confusion and getting to the truth of the matter. Now you take this beautiful opportunity from Divinity and you have the Two of Swords. You have this powerful weapon and you don't know what to do with it. You are confused. You are trying to figure things out. And so with this particular car, especially with this person being blindfolded, this person is in a sense of denial. Their sense of denial is how they're trying to make a truce from whatever the situation is. Let's say that you had to fight a battle and the universe gave you this sword to fight that battle. So now you have these swords. You don't know what to do with it. You're trying to figure out what's going to create peace. So... There's confusion here, there's denial here, there's not seeing the truth of the situation. From here, you move into the Three of Swords, there's heartbreak, you didn't make a decision quick enough, or somebody took that blindfold off and told you the truth and it hurt. So there's some type of heartbreak that you're experiencing. From there, you need to rest. You know, life has hit you kind of hard. We move into the Four of Swords where this person needs to mentally recuperate. This person needs some time to themselves to think. From the four of swords we move into the five of swords now this is considered the win lose card someone is playing unfairly someone is you know either tricking people and stealing their thoughts stealing their you know putting words in their mouth causing arguments or something like that but there's a lot of unfairness going on here you also see the clouds in the other pictures the clouds were kind of calm especially like when you look at cards uh with water or elements in the tarot pay attention to how they're depicted this is showing that things are rocky things are not okay two people are walking away defeated right now this person looks devastated and is crying and this person is sitting here smug so it might be the fact that this car comes up for someone who you feel like has unfairly took something from you has unfairly said something to you if someone feels like perhaps they can never win when it comes to you like you always have to have the last word so from there there's been defeat there's been heartbreak Things have been hard on this island. So we jump in the boat and with the Six of Swords, we are moving more to calm weather. We are moving to better times. You see this water down here, how rocky it looks. And over here, it's all this calm water. So you are being assisted in moving forward from a situation, argument, or a way of thinking. Sometimes this can literally be an indication of travel. However, when you get to this new land, you don't know who to trust. Somebody is running off with five of your swords so this is usually about secrecy this is usually about someone who is either keeping a secret someone who is not telling you all the information that you need to know someone who is trying to steal something from you so now you're feeling caged in. you feel like i don't know who to trust i don't know what's going on i moved to this new place nothing's going right they don't stole five of my swords and now i wake up eight of them are around me i'm trapped i'm in enemy territory i don't feel safe now, the biggest thing with this is that with this particular card, the Eight of Swords, even though this person feels trapped, it's all an illusion. If they actually, you know, open their eyes, and one of the big things that people like to say about this card is we never really see this person's hands. Like these bandages, these wrappings actually look pretty loose, so they probably could get their hands free. And if they can get their hands free, they could take this blindfold off that looks like it's sagging. And if they can look at their situation instead of being just kind of you know so scared and surrendering to it they would realize you're really not caged in fully there's a lot of space for you to just step back or step to the side and get out of the situation so this card is all about feeling mentally trapped but not really being trapped in a situation that you are allowing yourself to actually be trapped in some type of anxiety now from there 
Now you end up in a bed. I don't know how you got there, but you end up in a bed. You're still covering your eyes. You don't want to see. And now there are nine swords on the wall. I don't know who hung them up there. So now with this situation, this talks about anxiety, about fear, about nightmares. So when this comes up, sometimes maybe the anxiety is caused by a real source or maybe it's something that you're just perceiving. But either way, this is talking about how it's too much going on mentally that you need to move yourself away from. That stressing is not going to solve the situation. That is what the Nine of Swords stands for. Someone who is allowing so much of that anxiety to build up in their mind to where they're having a hard time sleeping they might be having nightmares you know it's a lot of fear that's following them that's haunting them from this moment somehow those swords fell because they shouldn't have been on the wall in the first place and now you got stabbed and someone threw an extra sword on top of that so there's 10 so this pretty much like again with the 10 endings and new beginnings now even though you see all of this what i want to talk about with this card this is considered overkill. It does not take that many swords to kill a person if you really wanted to. So this is considered sometimes being over dramatic. Sometimes this is uh, the card of like, what is that saying? Like beating a dead horse or I don't know. I, I get what the saying is trying to say, but it didn't feel right when it came out. But pretty much having a situation that is over and it's done with, you have hit rock bottom. Now, the good thing with that is there's nowhere else to go from here except for up. So in most cards, and even in this one, the sky is getting lighter. It was all dark. It was all ugly and black before, but now it's getting lighter. The sun is starting to come up. A new day is coming. So it's talking about how sometimes this card can stand for... Um, gossip it can stand for being mentally exhausted it can stand for being at the end of your rope it can also stand for obsession if someone is thinking about you really heavily and you know you're on their mind or vice versa but the fact of the matter is is that you have nowhere to go but up from here this person it almost looks like they're tapping out down here it's like say uncle you know this person is done they're done with the situation and so now they can start over new they can start over fresh moving out of the suit of swords we go into the royal family all right so the page of swords someone gave this novice a dangerous weapon and told them go learn that someone was the universe that someone came out of nowhere and gave them this sword and told them to swing it around so the page of swords sometimes is someone who does not think before they speak they don't understand the deadliness of the weapon that they willed yet this person can sometimes be a bit impulsive and if you look here with the clouds with the birds above their heads you know lots of thinking lots of thoughts sometimes this person doesn't understand the dangers of words sometimes they can cut deep they can gossip you know this card stands for gossip sometimes you know spread rumors say nasty things so you know sometimes this person has great ideas as well like sparks of inspiration but usually like i said this person does not understand the weapon of words yet so moving forward, we have the Knight of Swords. You see the energy in this card? You see how fast this knight is moving? This knight actually might be moving faster than the Knight of Wands, to be quite honest. But they don't think before they leap a lot of the times. They just jump into things. They just jump into arguments, easily incited at times to anger, easily trying to prove a point, has to have the last word, you know, lots of energy that's coming through here now can there be positive things that come through with the knight of swords sure could be someone who's not afraid to speak their mind not afraid to do a little research not afraid to jump out there and sing or you know public speak things of that nature but a lot of the times this comes up like i said of someone who has not mastered that weapon yet and they think by just rushing in without a plan is going to get them where they need to go they have not understood the intellect the thought that needs to go behind executing yet now we move to the king and the queen. Once again, these are the masters of this suit. Now with the queen, she is considered one of the toughest, in a sense, queens of the tarot. I don't think that's necessarily fair. I feel like all the queens are powerful and tough in their own way, whether they exude that and what's quote unquote considered soft. But this queen is no nonsense. This queen is not here for the lies, for the deception. She tells it like it is. You know, if you come to her for insight, she's going to give it to you. And if you see the butterflies here, this is why I say that symbolism is important. You know, transformative thoughts. 
you know, she takes you from one way of thinking and can elevate your way of thinking, can elevate your perspective. Now, usually this queen is considered the widow of the tarot. So they consider these to be the only king and queen who are not married. They consider them to, I believe, like brother and sister or something like that. But she is usually someone who might be single, someone who might be widowed, someone who might be divorced, something like that. Um, very mature energy. If she is ill aspected, usually it's someone who is cutthroat, will hurt your feelings too blunt, doesn't care how you feel, can be manipulative with words. So it can be a lot of that uh, harsher energy. Now, the King of Swords, more introspective, whereas the Queen is a bit outward with what she's thinking and also outward with what she's telling you. King of Swords is more introspective, more into being a deep thinker, being a philosopher. Um, you know, this person might be a writer. This person like might be um, a therapist, different things like that. They deal heavily with the thoughts. And once again, there's a butterfly up here too, but it's more of, I don't wanna say like a quiet thought because this person doesn't mind sharing as well, but you're gonna have to really come and ask them for their opinion. Like this person likes to observe. This person likes to really uh, research things and look at things and learns things, you know, might even be a scientist. So those are things to keep in mind when it comes to, you know, the suits. All right, hope you're still with me. Like I said, if you need to go refresh them snacks, go on ahead. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different ways to shuffle. I'm not gonna really go into that because you'll find what feels right for you. Sometimes I shuffle like this and sometimes I shuffle like this. Now, in regards to jumpers, wonderful point universe. In regards to jumpers, um, I happen to take jumpers. You don't have to. Sometimes you can shuffle and you can just take off the top, you know, wherever you stop. So if you happen to shuffle like this and you decide you want to take the cards right off the top, you can do that. Um, whatever feels right for you. Some people will cut the deck and grab from there. Like whatever feels right. There is no right or wrong way. It's what is best for you. Okay, now. So I've broken down each card, I've broken down the suits, I've broken down pretty much um, the storyline so you get the gist of it. And that's why it's important to know the gist of each card because as you're reading, especially keep in mind that this is very important what I'm going to say. When you are asking the cards a question, be very clear about that question, you know, be very clear about what it is that you're asking. If you want to know how somebody feels about you, but you're asking, you know, what they thought about you, that's conflicting. Those are two conflicting different um, questions. You know, what somebody thinks and what someone feels. Be very clear, be very precise if you can. Have a clear mind and focus on your question when you're asking. Now, before I even jump into a reading, what I like to do is I ground and I center myself. So what I do is I put my feet flat on the ground, I sit there, I allow myself to just breathe, and I envision roots coming up from the earth, circling around my ankles, circling around my body, not in a dangerous way, but just in a very loving, earthly embrace. And I envision excess energy running down out of my body into those roots, into the earth, helping me to just get any like energy that has me jittery, any like over excess energy from throughout my day, just get that out of my system. Then what I do is I center myself, I allow myself to feel one with the universe. Now this might take some time, you know, this might take some time for you. Uh, some people like to meditate beforehand, that's absolutely fine. You're gonna figure out your process and that's okay. After I ground and I center myself, what I do is I talk to the angels and I ask the angels to please cleanse and clear my energy. I ask that my chakras be opened and closed to what is healthiest for me, to be aligned and cleared in regards to the energy that is healthiest for me. I ask that I be shielded in love and light and protection. I ask that the universe pours the energy of the universe into my crown chakra and allows it to mix with my own energy in a harmonious way. Now, you don't have to do all these things. This is just my process, especially because when I do reading, sometimes I'm channeling so much. Sometimes I'm reading for a bunch of people that I can start feeling depleted. So I try not to go off of my own energy. Instead, I ask for the energy of the universe, like I said, to be poured down through my crown chakra. I ask for the energy of the earth to rise up through my root chakra and for both energies to mix within me in a harmonious way. 
I ask the angels to allow me to be a channel of divine love, light, healing, and guidance. I ask that I can hear beyond my ego, see beyond my ego, be, think, and speak beyond my ego. And then I jump into my reading. So that's my process. I know it sounds like a lot, but I'm so used to kind of doing it that it just... It just flows like that. So you just need to figure out what feels right for you. And whether that's just saying a quick prayer, whether that's just asking that the energy of your deck be cleared, you know, you have to do what feels right for you. Now, speaking on that particular point, um, I have a bunch of crystals up here. I'm not typically one of the people who um, puts crystals on my deck, though I do know that some people do that to clear the energy and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, some people burn sage. I used to do that, but then I started becoming um, allergic to the smoke. So that's fine too. But there's so many different ways you can cleanse with, um, you know, just prayer. You can cleanse with uh, energy. You can cleanse with sound, with crystals, with just there's so many different ways to cleanse your space, to cleanse your decks. Um, I do not let different people play with my oracle cards. And if I do allow someone to use my oracle cards, I always cleanse the energy afterwards because everyone carries their own energy. So just keep that in mind, especially if you want to touch someone else's oracle cards, always ask first. But afterwards, be sure that when you pick it up in your hands, you know, after they've used it or whatever the case is, ask the universe to cleanse it for you before you use it. And then after you do a reading, you know, especially if you've done something very heavy, just ask the universe to clear the energy. Sometimes I also clear the energy while I'm reading by knocking on it three times to help just recharge the energy. So that might work for you. So there's so many different ways to cleanse, clear and charge your decks. Now, I'm trying to think of what else I should mention in this video. If there's anything that I'm missing out on that you're curious about, please leave it in the comment below. And if I need to, I'll make a, a follow up video that addresses that or I'll try to answer you in the comments. But the biggest thing is once you know the meanings and you also have, you know, found a deck that you resonate with and it speaks to you in a certain way, you know, you will start to pick up on different things that intuitively come through for you. So when you're pairing this, and it doesn't matter if you're doing it with oracle cards as well, same thing. An oracle card can speak to you about a specific message, but looking at the image, you know, you might pick up on something different. And that happens to me a lot. Sometimes you'll hear me in my reading say that I hear something like my clear audience is working. And so it really is a matter of the tarot cards are helping you to focus your energy, you know, it is helping you to tap into the universe. You know, it's not necessarily that it's doing it. It is helping you to identify with images that the universe can talk to you through that you will pick up on. So that's the most important thing to keep in mind. All right, so the next part that we're going to jump on to, um, I've been asked before, like, in what direction in order do I read in? So for myself, um, like I said, it really depends on the question that I'm asking. Then I allow myself to be drawn to whichever card grabs me. So being an intuitive reader, it really is about what is standing out to me. What is the universe pointing out to me and why? Sometimes, let's say I laid the cards out. Sometimes I might read, you know, from left to right. Sometimes this particular card might grab me first and then I'm holding it, I'm looking at it, you know, I'm allowing myself to pick up whatever I'm picking up from it. And then this card for whatever reason will feel like it wants to be read with this one. So I'll grab this one next. So there really is no set order. Sometimes I'll put cards down after I picked up the initial message and I just get the energy to just move them around. And I might move them and then I might feel another message that's coming through. So the main thing is, unless you have a specific spread laid out where you're looking at past, present, and future, if you're doing it more free form, you know, it's okay for you to just do what is resonating with you. Like if you have specific spots, especially, especially if you're doing, let's say, um, I'm trying to remember the name, I haven't done it in a while, but like the Celtic spread, you know, something like that that has definite spots where there's certain meanings then yes you would follow that but something where you know and I tend to read this way quite often something where it's more free form I let the universe come through and just speak to me and that's why when I'm channeling especially for um the general collective so many different messages hit me because there's so many different so many different formations that the universe will point out of, hey, put this card with this. There's a message to someone specifically for that. Put this with this. Let this stand by itself, especially with Oracle cards. So let's play a little game, okay? 
So I know that this isn't a pick a pile, but I want to kind of point out some of the things that I was talking about. All right. Great angels, give me a message for those watching. I would like three different piles, please. I felt inspired to just cut the deck real quick. Now, in regards to what I just did, when I'm going through, sometimes, like I said, I will feel drawn to a certain card. Sometimes I can't stop staring at a certain card. And so I'll pull that out. You know, you might feel something when you touch a certain card. Allow yourself to be open to whatever it is the universe is guiding you towards. Like, and the biggest thing is don't second guess. Just the more you learn to trust and just go with your intuition, the better it is at um, picking up the little signals and signs and the stronger and, and, and easier it'll get for you. So we have these three different piles right here. This is a message to those watching from the universe. So pick a pile. I'll put the timestamp below and you'll be able to figure out which one, but go ahead, pick a pile. All right. So message to those of you who chose this first pile. Okay, so I want to know, I want to try this, this exercise, because like I said, this is all new for me. So I would love to know for those of you who chose pile one, what do you think that this is saying? I would love for you to write that in the comments to me. What do you think that this combination is saying a message? We have the two of pentacles here and then we have the five of cups. So what is this saying to you? Those of you who chose pile two, we have the moon and we have the three of wands. So I would love to know what you think this is saying to you, a message from the universe to you. Like I said, please be sure to write it in the comments below. And if you need to pause, I would love for you to pause. I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain in a moment what's coming through to me. But I really do want to hear what you picked up on. And there is no right or wrong. This is general and for the collective. So what I might say might resonate for some of you who are watching this. But for others of you, you might be like, no, what I picked up on resonated for me. And that's absolutely fine. This is just an exercise for us. So this third pile, we have justice and we have the magician to major arcana. So let me know what you feel as though the universe's message to you is. All right, now coming back over here, let's dive into this. So please keep in mind, like I said, I'm reading for a lot of different people. So a lot of different things come through to me. But when I'm picking up a message for those of you who chose pile one, with this particular card, remember I said that this is the two of pentacles. This is usually about juggling. Sometimes this card also comes up when people need to have a little more fun, when they need to be a little more playful. Now, this is talking to me about some type of past action. I'm picking up the energy here, especially coupled with the five of cups of someone possibly either juggling between two different people, two different job situations, you know, two different options. And perhaps one of the options got taken away from you. Or perhaps something happened that squandered that option to where now you're looking back on the past and you're wondering, you know, damn, I should have taken that. The universe is saying, don't beat yourself up too hard. Know that there's something better that's still there for you. Know that you still have an option there for you that you're not even considering. Now, for some of you, I am also seeing something with like, and I'm hearing. So, you know, I do like to point out when I'm hearing something. And when I do hear when I'm channeling, it's very faint sometimes. Very rarely do I hear something very loud. Um, sometimes I get a certain sensation, but I usually hear out of my left ear. And so what I just heard was something in regards to um, like being single, like someone trying to get back on the horse. So for some of you who are watching, it might be the fact that you have been single and you're trying to either juggle different prospects or you're trying to consider getting back out there because because after some type of breakup, you feel like you need to get back into the dating sphere. You need to get back out there. For someone specific, you may have been playing around. You may have been juggling two different people and 
both of them or one of them decided they're not going to play this game with you so there is something that's coming through especially with this card this person is wearing a cloak of despair pay attention to the colors that also pop up when you're reading so whatever is taking place whoever i'm reading for like i said there is a feeling of back and forth there is a feeling that you have not settled on one decision you're trying to balance you know two different things either you are trying to commute back and forth for work you're trying to keep up certain like relationships or appearances there's something that you're doing where the universe is saying that this particular option either led to or is about to lead to some type of fallout and they want you to know though that even though the situation seems bad there is actually an opportunity here for something better there is an option here to either make amends to apologize or you might be receiving an apology for someone who did this to you but and i just heard job for someone so it might be the fact that your job um decided not to go with you and they went with someone else some of you might be getting a phone call that they decided that they're actually going to hire you instead so there's a lot of different energy that's hitting me in regards to this but i really do want to hear what came to you when you saw this card this whole pile right here overall is talking about don't worry about the past don't focus on the past whatever took place whatever was being juggled whatever was trying to find balance but couldn't you know don't harp on that there's something else that's still there you got to pull away from looking at the past so that you can see the present so that you can see the future that is the main energy that's coming through for this particular pile now moving for those who chose pile two we have the moon and we have the three of wands so this is talking to me about some type of journey I feel like some of you might be contemplating some type of transition in your life, either a physical move, either some type of transition to a new job or relationship, something like that. But things are a bit unclear. The universe is telling you with these two particular cards, don't rush. You don't have all the facts yet. With this moon card right here, it's telling you to listen to your intuition and also to realize that something is hidden. It doesn't have to be something nefarious, doesn't have to be something, you know, just completely messed up in lies and all that stuff. For some of you, it might be something like that, but it's a matter of the universe is saying, we are taking care of things. We're going to bring you some type of information. Right now, do not rush. Don't jump. Don't make an impulsive decision. Wait till we give you the signal. And that's pretty much the gist of these cards right here. Wait until we bring you some type of insight, till we bring you some type of sign. Like there's something that's going on that you're not aware of. It can be an opportunity that's about to come to you or something that is about to be revealed. But the universe is saying, pause. Now, for those of you who chose pile three, what I'm picking up with this, and I want to talk about this, I'm so happy these came out, is because major arcana, when they come up in your reading, this is major... Um, energy this is an area wherever it comes up in your reading that you should really pay attention to because the universe is highlighting the energy there so what the universe wants those who chose pile three to know is that we have justice we have the magician so this could be talking for some of you in regards to like i said something legal and the universe is talking about you know things may go in your favor they have the great communicator. Some of you possibly either need to find a lawyer, just found one, or there's something with like what's hitting me with this justice and the great communicator right here is making sure that you have all your facts together, all your evidence together, and making sure that you have great representation. That's what's really hitting me specifically for someone. What's also coming through with this particular card is I'm getting an energy here of some of you I'm, I'm i'm feeling like the universe is saying when are you going to get up and make something happen there's an energy that's hitting me where they're saying you have so much potential you have so many resources around you and for someone specific that i'm talking to there's an energy of almost defeat where you felt as though you know what's going on like why isn't the universe stepping in and helping me like why hasn't this happened why hasn't that happened and the universe is saying what are you doing to help yourself we've given you all the tools like we're going to meet you halfway but in order to do that you have to step forward so there's an energy of motivation that's hitting me here i do get a feeling of divorce for someone specific here um, the energy that's hitting me, I'm staring at the sword and I feel like some type of divorce proceeding going through. I feel like something may have been very long and drawn out. The universe, I feel like is showing that you might end up getting more than what you thought you would get from the divorce. So that's coming through. 
Now, I want to use this opportunity to show you something else that I was talking about before. So clarifier cards and how I use those. Now, if there's a particular card that I feel like for whatever reason, I'm not grabbing as much of the energy or the storyline that they're trying to tell me, then sometimes I ask for clarification. And so what I'll do is I'll go to my tarot deck. I'll ask for clarification on a specific card and I'll pull it over. So just like I was talking about with someone getting more, we have this here and please notice repeating symbolism so we have the scales and we have the scales we have half and half so there's some type of equal split that's going on there's someone getting something that they were owed or due and so that's coming through as i had mentioned because when i was staring here it gave me the feeling of someone receiving a bit more than they thought they were going to get so for this particular card tell me more please clarify we get the queen of cups and so interestingly enough with this, I'm also feeling like this is talking about someone like use your words for whatever reason. For those of you who this has nothing to do with court, this has nothing to do with um, a divorce or anything like that. If you are dealing with a situation where you want someone to either consider your point of view, you want someone to consider you for a position or something of that nature. If there's some type of argument that you're trying to kind of put to rest, the universe is saying, Make sure that you're not speaking from a place to try to wound anyone, you know, that you're using clear communication, that you're also listening to your intuition. And I get a sense of trying to see the other person's perspective. So if there is any type of um, disruption that has happened, any need for apologies or understanding, or even if you've had wonderful ideas, sometimes this particular queen is very imaginative, very creative. So if you had wonderful ideas that you were trying to get across to people, it's really about tapping into this magician energy and really how highlighting those ideas, really allowing things to be said in a way that people can see their part or see the merit of what's going on. So it's almost like, um, I don't want to say like putting on a show, but really selling your point of view. Now, for those of you that there was some type of hardship and apologies need to be made, whether you need to apologize or someone else needs to apologize to you, the universe is saying there is a fairness that's happening here. There is a meeting of the minds and it's all about coming from the heart. It's all about communicating from the heart. Keep the issue in mind. Understand why exactly you both might be arguing or might be upset. Don't let outside influences or outside um, emotions that have bubbled up be the factor of the conversation. So that's what's coming through. Also for someone specific, what's hitting me as I'm staring at these particular cards, and sometimes that happens to me when I'm reading, that my sight will, like I said, go to something um specific versus what I'm holding or what I'm looking at. So these two cards, for whatever reason, the universe says something to me about school and scholarship. So something is hitting me that for someone watching, there might be a scholarship that is awarded to you. You might win some type of prize money or some type of grant or something like that. And that's what I'm picking up on. I'm hearing something about an actor here. interesting so something about and this is very specific but something about an actor and a casting director is hitting me here for someone who is watching they're telling me something about um there's an opportunity that's going to be coming to you soon they're telling me never too small so you might actually be offered a small part and it feels to you like it's small but that opportunity i feel like is going to kind of be your doorway into something bigger there's something with a casting director who has been watching you who is trying to give you some type of opportunity and they just told me bigger so I actually feel like they want me to expand this energy from whoever I'm talking to right now still talking to the actor but I feel like something with like a job something with a position for someone you might be asked to take on a small task and it seems small to you you're actually being given a chance that this task will lead you to something bigger. It's going to lead you to bigger trust where somebody is going to realize your potential and offer you so much more. So for who I'm talking to specifically, it might be a role that you're offered. You take a small one, but it leads to something bigger either in that same project or later down the line. And for whoever I'm talking to where they said bigger, the energy expanded, it could be the fact that you're asked to do something in your company, your job, your family, whatever, and you do it, but that allows you an opportunity to be blessed in a much bigger way. So they're telling me watching, please keep in mind that somebody is watching you. And I'm very drawn to the way this queen is looking at this cup. Someone has had their eye on you and they are noticing your hard work. So please keep that in mind. You're not being overlooked. 
You're not being overlooked. It's just a matter of divine timing. And that timing is coming very soon for whoever I'm speaking to right now who chose this particular pile. All right. Ooh. So like I said, I would love to hear what you came up with. And please know that there is no right or wrong. You know, you are talking about something specific to yourself. I am channeling for a bunch of different people. So I would love to hear what you came up with. Like I was saying before, the pictures can really hit you when it comes to the symbolism, you know, especially with different tarot decks. Sometimes the colors will really hit you. Either it'll trigger something within you or something that uh, you notice, like something, for instance, like with the black, you know, this sadness that this person is wearing, this sorrow, this regret, or how these colors are more lively, you know, different things like that. This dress right here is made from the waves of the water. She is shrouded in her emotion. She wears her emotions very clearly for others to see. So things like that are really going to grab you and really help you with reading tarot. And understand that it's a process. The more you continue to do it, the more you build a personal relationship with, you know, your guides, with your intuition, with your cards. So don't feel like you have to rush, you have to jump, you have to do this right now. Like it is a journey. I've been reading for many, many years and it's like as I continue, I'm always learning something new. I love watching other people and seeing, you know, how they come across different insight. You know, I love how the universe opens up my own insight in different ways. I love coming across different tarot decks and how they speak to me. So it really is a a journey and allow yourself to just be on that to have fun to continue to practice like I said if you want to pull a card a day you know if you shuffle your cards and you wake up in the morning and you ask hey universe what would you like me to know for today and you turn a card we got the two of swords okay well you might be missing something you might be missing a detail there might be some type of truth that you need to come to some type of little argument that takes place you might be denying something so different things like that clarify knight of cups well, this can talk about emotions. This can talk about somebody who is trying to get your attention, but you're not paying attention to them. It could be you trying to get someone else's attention and they're saying, hey, the approach you're using is not working. You need to try something a little better. It could be something with a family member reaching out to you and offering you some type of proposal that you don't really want to be a part of. So you're going to try to find a nice way to kind of turn it down. So it's many different things that can come up. And that's why I say when you're starting to learn, it might be nice to keep a journal so that in the beginning of the day you can write down what came to you and you can start comparing that by what took place by the end of the day and what stood out to you all right so that's all that I can think of at the moment I'm sorry if I missed anything um if so please let me know and I will either try to include it in a comment or you know it, depending on how many things might stand out to you um I might make another video for it but Please keep in mind that this is my process and how I read and it's completely okay if you do something different. In fact, if you do do something different, if something else works for you, I would love to hear about it. You know, please feel free if you're comfortable sharing, you know, whatever different information or anything that stood out to you um, from this particular video in the comments. I would love to read it and I really appreciate you taking the time. So I am going to put these away. And I am going to move into the second part of this video, which you can find the link for in the description box below. And that is going to go into Cardomancy. So thank you so much once again for taking the time. I hope that this video was informative. This was really new for me. I wasn't sure like what exactly to teach and I tried to give you as much information as possible. I hope it wasn't an overload, but I really appreciate you all. And I am sending you all lots of love, light, and positive energy. Now, if in the meantime, um, between you studying the tarot, if you would like to get a personal reading from me, then you can find the link for my Etsy shop in the description box below. And I offer readings on a variety of topics. So whether it's about career, about love life, spiritual advancement, or you want to ask a specific question, you can definitely find everything you need in my Etsy shop but sending you lots of love and light. Please keep me updated on your tarot journey and take care. See you in part two.